Hi, I'm Mark G1DX. Today I want to show you the uh, new acquisition we have to our stock at the Anytone Ares 2. A very interesting 10 meter transceiver because it's not only exceptionally good for the type of radio and market it's aimed at, but it also has the ability to reasonably easy be um, expanded in terms of its frequency coverage for those of you that may wish to experiment somewhere outside the 10 meter band. Now what we're going to do is turn the radio around and we'll go through the panel and also look at the laptop as well and look at some of the features that you can get to via the panel and via the software. So the first item of course is your meter obviously but it is a nice analog meter it will give you your uh, approximate power output, the, the, the strength of the reception and also the uh, SWR of your antenna. Um, not to be taken too literally but it's a good indicator and you'll know if your antenna's in tune or not. Of course you've got your mic, your mic port will, will, uh, will connect a mic up in a minute. You have your volume control and squelch, that's self-explanatory. <clears throat> you have your Clarifier. Now, um, clarifiers generally are not used on um, radios with a VFO on them, but when you're channelized, uh, if the radios are not exactly on frequency, which to be honest with you, in this class of equipment is quite likely, you've got the ability to clarify someone so when you're on sideband you can hear them clearly not to be used for AM or FM, it's there predominantly for sideband. You've got your RF gain control, it's again self-explanatory. Um, and something that's unusually good on this radio, and you don't see this feature on equipment of this class generally, is the uh, noise, bla uh, noise blanker and automatic um, noise limiter. Um, what I'm gonna do is just turn the volume up now. I want you to hear something. I'm going to turn this off. If you hear that, that hissing, that is real uh, digital AF noise reduction. Rather trick and it really works. It's not just a capacitor cutting down the treble response. It really does make a difference to the um, the noise, especially on FM, where you get that horrible hiss. So really good. So when you've got your squelch off as it is here, if you for maximum sensitivity, if you don't want that horrible hiss you normally get, this on FM, this enables you to um, tolerate the background noise. So it very much sounds similar to AM. Um, You've also got um, your plus 10 kilohertz shift. These are, um, should we say, echoes, <laughs> and it does have echo on it, but echoes of the, um, of the 11 meter band, um, where you want the upper uppers and the lower lowers, but we, we can, we, I'm sure you can experiment with that. Of course, you've got your power amplifier, PA system selector. Um, for those of you who want to use this as a PA system, which I suspect won't be many, if any, but you do have FM, AM, upper and lower sideband, and then you have banks A to F, which you can program with various frequency, um, frequencies. So, for instance, you could have a set number of channels for the uh, 10 meter handband, and those of you that uh, want to experiment with some of the more fruity bands, uh, you can have the uh, UK and the SEPT EU uh, frequencies as well uh, for the other band. Um, you have echo, uh, which you can adjust. Um, be uh, interesting if anyone does use that on 10 meters, I, su I would probably suggest you don't. Um, and then you have the weather uh, channel which you can set between 150 megahertz and 170 megahertz. Again this is probably something that's not particularly useful in the UK uh, but still nice to have it on there. And then you've got your two high and low bands. These are just again shifts 
for you to shift off of the preset programming frequencies. Um, I think in a moment when we go into the software, most of us, <clears throat> most of the purchasers of this radio will actually just stick to the frequencies that they've set in using the software and define which uh, frequency bank. You have your mic gain and very useful your power uh, uh, gain control as well. This radio is rather exceptional in that it can produce up to um, 40 watts um, of FM power um, and 35 watts on SSB, uh, which is very powerful for a radio of this size. Um, and um, in a moment, we're going to have a look inside it, but there is absolutely no need to open this radio up and get your um, screwdriver out. This radio, frankly, there's nothing to adjust anyway, um, but we can have a look inside it in a moment. And then very lastly, you have your your channel selector, which um, I'm going to turn that off now. The channel selector, which will go from, um, I think zero, or is it one? Let's, yeah, z from one to 40. So you've got 40 channels on each band. So five, uh, five times, sorry, six times 40 channels. So you've got a lot of channels that you can preset in software. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to flip the radio around so we can have a look at the back of it, so you can see what's at the back. Um, and then we're going to take the lid off, because I know you're, you're, if we don't, you will. So we'll take the lid off. You can have a look inside the radio. Convince yourself there's not much to see, so you can just enjoy the radio for what it is. So as you see on the back of the radio, a um, couple of useful features. Again, you don't always see of radios of this uh, class is a removable power lead might be a small thing but some radios have a permanently attached power lead which can make installing the radio quite tricky and also if you damage the lead you you have a problem so here you have a separate lead which of course is fused um, you've got your, your um, uh, SO239 connector uh, you've got your external speaker uh, ports and also, critically, you've got your uh, USB programming port that we'll go to in a moment for having uh, um, for programming the radio and updating its firmware. Because as as supplied, it will just do the 10 meter UK handband. What we're going to do now, I've I've taken um, I've taken the uh, the screws out of the radio only so we can quickly take the lid off and have a little look inside it. So we've, what we've done, we've lifted the lid up and now we're going to just have a look inside the radio and uh, just show you a few features which again set this as, um, aside from its, its class of radio. I want you to notice that the, um, the power transistors, the voltage regulator, they're all nicely heat synced and even some of the integrated circuits inside the radio have got their own heat sinks as well. Um, the substrate of the board is not your normal paper type, it's fiberglass printed circuit board, sur surface mounted components, but do notice uh, there, are, there are no pots to play around with. So there's really not much point taking the lid off, but you can see the quality of the radio, this isn't a golden sample, this is pulled straight out of stock. It's nice, it's a nicely assembled radio, fairly simple, but that's because it has large scale integrated circuits. So now we're going to put the lid back on, get the laptop out and go through the software so you can see what else you can do this instead of using the screwdrivers, using the software. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go through how you turn this radio from as it's supplied, which is uh, as a 10 meter radio um, with channels that you probably don't want to use because you don't know what they are, into something that's very useful for you either as a ham or for those that like experimenting. Um, so if you go to our website, the, so that's um, hamradio.co.uk, and punch in Aries 2 and bring up the product listing. 
um, you'll see the, the price of the radio and whether it's in stock or not. Um, and also, if you scroll down, you'll see the out-of-the-box specifications, including the, the out-of-the-box frequency coverage. But then further down, you'll see three downloadable items. One of them is the uh, user manual, which is a soft copy of the manual that comes with the radio. Uh, one of them is how to update the firmware in the radio. And that, again, just to recap, updating the firmware allows you to expand the um, frequency coverage of it. And then you have a third file, which is an executable, which is the ARIES update firmware, which actually contains both the programming firmware, sorry, programming software and the firmware update. So if you click on that file, it will download. And then if you go into, um, I, I would recommend that you down, or download also a copy of WinRAR or RAR, so, or RAR Labs. Um, once you've unzipped the software, uh, you will see these files uh, in a folder called Aries Update on your PC. First thing you need to do is, without connecting the programming cable, is double click on this file that says QX Code Pro 3 Setup. That's the firmware update tool. Um, if you double click on that, um, I won't do it on this machine because it uh, has some uh, admin rights. It will, it will generate a program that <clears throat> is, is the actual firmware updater. And that's what it will look like. And to get that to work, if you use the, um, the supplied, we supply a USB programming cable. It's already in the box. It, it's not an extra. If you plug that into your computer, once you've got that program up and running, and then back it into the back of the radio. Turn the radio on. Um, you will see it on COM port 3. Uh, when it's all flashed up and running properly. Update the firmware. Uh, execute the program and update the firmware. And then, after the firmware's been uploaded, you can then start the actual programming tool. And if you look at the top of the programming tool up here, it says select CB or HF. So HF is the 10 meter band, but if you go to the CB setting, that will enable the radio to cover from 24.7150 all the way up to 30.1050 megahertz. Um, and you can select which bands that you want that to be covered by on the radio, L to A, um, L to B, etc. Um, and also you can set your weather channel as well. And all of those, the, all of these parameters are for experimentation. As you see here, you've got a Roger beep function. Um, there's lots of things which, frankly, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to use yet, but great for experimentation. So what we're going to do now, um, we've got the programming software up, which is terrific. But you, for those of you who may wish to like experimenting, you'd probably like to know where do you start in terms of programming frequencies. Well, those of you that already know, know exactly which frequencies you'd like to program in the radio. But those of you who don't know, you might wish to have a look on the internet. If you Google um, Ofcom, that's Oscar Foxtrot, Charlie Oscar Mike, Ofcom Oscar F Foxtrot 364, OF364, if you Google that, that will bring you up the Ofcom's um, document on 
people that like to operate on citizens band and if you scroll down to this document you can read the text in there to satisfy yourself that you're staying within the law but very importantly you have a frequency set table on page five which covers the um, the free band frequencies from 1 to 40 for the UK and the free band frequencies from 1 to 40 for the EU stroke set frequencies. Um, reading the, the document briefly, uh, for those who like to experiment on sideband, the sideband operation uh, is Ofcom are encouraging you to do that on the set EU channels and the UK channels are for FM operation. There's also a little term that the, uh, the set sideband operators use for the FM operators, but probably that's for another day. But all of the information that you need is in this document. I encourage you to read it, but, but critically, you've got your table there. If you program all of these frequencies into one of the bands, uh, um, from channel 1 to 40. Um, if you want to just see who's out there, of course, the popular channels for calling are, are the is channel 14 and 19. So I've downloaded the Ofcom publication and I now have access to the um, UK and the European frequencies. So what I could do now, I could do now, is I could go onto the software, uh, the Ares programming software, uh, and then by double clicking on each channel, program in each corresponding channel off of the Ofcom document. However, some kind person called Bill, 2E0 Fox India, sorry, Fox Echo India, has already done this and if you look inside the the WinRAR zip file you'll see a folder called bill if you double click on that you you have the dat files with the UK um, CB frequencies on there already programmed and and the various readmes to guide you which file you need to load so I probably to cut cut down some laborious tasks, I would load those ones to start with, see how you get on, um, and then if you have any specific frequencies that you would like to program for the other bands, uh, for instance the 10 meter bands, or if you want to, um, if you have a favorite talk group on SSB on one of your uh, favorite frequencies, you can program that straight in to the radio and you'll take a note what, which channel to click to. So that really concludes it. You've got your programming software, you've got your firmware update software, you have your radio, you have your microphone, manual and programming lead and power lead with a fuse in it. It's a very complete package. It doesn't break the bank and I hope and we hope you enjoy using it. So I'd encourage you now to have a look at our listing on our website. So just to conclude, it's hamradio.co.uk. And if you punch into the search bar um, Aries 2, any tone Aries 2, it will take you straight to our uh, listing with the stock availability, the current price, which is 179.99, always open to revision. Uh, or you can give us a call directly on 0345 2300 599 and speak to one of our sales team. Hope you enjoy your radio and hope you enjoy um, your day.